What's going on, everybody? This is the Ground Up Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron, and this is Keisha Rock. And this is episode 44. Today, we're bringing you Kayla Wright, owner of Titans and Tierras, an online children's boutique. Welcome, Kayla. So happy to be here with y'all. Thanks for having me. Of course. I'm happy to have you. So we met recently at the Black Women's Exchange pop-up networking event. Um, shout out to them for having a space here in Richmond for um, Black creatives and Black entrepreneurs. But I met you and you said, I want to be on the podcast. I want to share my story. And I said, come on, sis, be on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> so listening to the podcast, I was like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. So Titans and Tierra, it is an online children's boutique. How'd you start that? So I am not meant to work for anybody, right? Ooh, she jumping out in the so, gate with it, right, y'all. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna jump off the gate, right? And it's and it's good that I realized it, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was like, okay, well, what can I do that will make me some money? I was like, what can I do that'll be fun? What can I do, you know, that'll let me show my personality? Um, so doing a lot of soul searching and figuring out and guessing and dibble dabbling into different things. Um, Children's Boutique um, came to mind because I love kids. I love babysitting and, you know, holding my friend's kids and my, you know, I have little siblings and little nephews. And I was like, this would be perfect because, you know, I'm passionate about kids and I love going shopping. So um, Titans and TRs came up and it's been a journey ever since. Nice. So, all right. So you said you are not meant to work for nobody. So at the time when you decided to start this business, were you working for someone? Yes. And I, I mean, I still work for someone because of course, you know, I want to um, be in a comfortable enough space to not work for anyone. So I'm giving myself the retirement age of 40. Oh, okay. So by 40, I will be a hundred percent entrepreneur so, but you know, right now I am still doing part-time uh, Titans and TRs and then full-time employee. So what is that like? Um, you say it so simply, but I know what it's like to be, full, you know, part full-time, you know, working nine to five and also building a business. You know, what are your days like? What's that experience been like for you? My days are long and hard and stressful, definitely. <laughs> um, you know, I definitely work, of course, the eight to five and then, five o'clock I come home and I work in Petersburg and I live in Richmond so that's like a 35 minute drive already yeah so um you know once I get home you know I have to figure out what it is that I'm doing for business if I even have the mental space you know to do so so a lot of the time I spend my weekends doing everything business cramming it all in so I do my um, pop-up shops I do events you know account inventory create my post to post for the week. Um, but it is long, but it's, it's rewarding. And that's how I know I'm doing what I'm supposed to do because, you know, it's not a long feeling of, you know, I hate it here. I hate it here. It's just like, it's worth it. You know, I'm tired, but that's okay yeah. because it's going to pay off. Right. That's so true. What is it? Um, wh so what were those beginning steps like though of actually like founding the business? Like, did you know what you were doing <laughs> or like, did you have a blueprint? Like, how did you actually create this? Yeah. So, um, I actually joined, um, it was like a big thing that was going around. A good friend of mine, um, was an accountability and a st um, starter business coach. Hmm. Um, so she started something called the black business bootcamp. And it was a boot camp for people that were interested in starting businesses, but didn't know what to do. Wow. So I was like, okay. And it was free, which is crazy because usually she charges, you know, cause she's been doing it for so long, but she charges like thousand dollars for things like this. Right. So. Oh you know, girl, you had an opportunity, a huge opportunity. Hello. That. Right. So I was like, if I but was let me ask you this, Kayla, were you seeking that opportunity? Like how, like, how did it really fall come to come to be? It was literally on Facebook. Like she posted it and she was like, I'm only accepting, I think it was like 20 people. So mind you, she's well known. You know, she has a, um, comp or a business company called Womb, which is Women Owned Minority Businesses. So oh, she's been, I know exactly who you're talking about. Yeah. You're familiar? Yes. Yeah. So of course, you know, she's big. So yeah. for her to say 20 people, I was like, well, let me just put myself in there. But I was like, you know, she's not going to choose me. You know how you are. You're mm -hmm. like, 
20 people out of all the people she knows. Okay, whatever. So I put it in there and she was like, you know, I want to interview you. And I was like, oh my gosh. So long story short, we went through that and it was an amazing experience. It was like five weeks long and she went into details about target audience and, you know, what you may want to do and LLC and, you know, sole proprietorship and how much money you need to start a business and just everything that I was like, yeah. like right. overwhelmed. But I was like, if I went through all this and I don't start this business, mm. like this could have been a spot for somebody else, really, you know, if I'm not going to go ahead and do it. So once I graduated, I was like, I have the tools. It's time to get this money. And then what was next after that? So you had this program that basically walked you through how to start a business, which is incredible opportunity that you had. You took it. But once the program was no more, like what was the next step um, to start making money? The next step was to put everything in motion. So, of course, um, the beginning aspect was learning how to do it, you know, if you wanted to take the leap. So I took all my notes and I started going little. She gave a step-by-step. So I started step-by-step, got my LLC, got my business license, um, got a website designer, got, um, you know, a logo created, created the Instagram, created the Facebook page. So did all that. Um, One thing I wish I would have done was done market research because it turns out that's like a big thing. So of course, when I'm starting, you know, we really didn't talk about that. So um, I just started, you know, buying inventory, spent like so much money that I shouldn't have, you know, spent because I'm so excited. I'm like, I need clothes. I need clothes. So I'm spending $500, $600 on clothes. And I'm like, everyone's going to shop for me because this is just, you know, the perfect world that I live in. And then it's like, no, sis, it's, it's more to it than that. So right. I, I, my house looks like a warehouse. Yeah. I had clothes packed up all the way to the top i'm searching for items throwing things around and my organization skills y'all pray for me because (laughs) you know i have to get it together so my boyfriend's like girl if you don't come and clean up this living room because i'm searching you know for one size like a zero to three months or something so i'm like yeah not there (laughs) not there so of course once i finally find it i'm like yeah, I got it. And then my living room looks like a hurricane. So, <laughs> so what what skills did you like come into this being confident in? And like, what have you had to learn to actually get the business up and running and moving? Um, the skills that I was able to bring to the table is, of course, um, being everyone's best friend. Um, I think that my personality is big and it's loud and it's comfortable. For people, so of course, you know, people are like, of course, I want to buy from somebody that I know or that I love. Um, so that part was um, easy, but then learning that it's more than just your family and friends. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, after a year of being a business, that was kind of like a punch in the gut, you know, because it's like, well, why is my cousin, you know, from New York not shopping with me? You know, because it's just like, that's my cousin, but is really about, you know, they're not in the market to get what I'm selling, which is right. okay. And that's fine. But, you know, it was like her my feelings because I'm like, why would you not, especially if they have kids, you know? Yeah. I'm like, you have a baby, come shop. But then it's like, you know, they, you don't know their situation. Right. You yeah. know, they might not even be shopping for the kid, you know, so it's okay. But that was, I want to say like the biggest lesson. It's like, you know, there's so many strangers that will meet you and will say, girl, I need to buy five outfits. And you're kind of like, what? You know, like, okay, that's fine. So it just, you know, it just depends on who who's in the need for what I'm selling at the moment. Right. Yeah. Um, so how do you go about marketing the brand? So marketing, I do um, pop-up shops. I try to do it every weekend. Um, I do pop-up shops around Richmond. Um, I do, of course, of course, the social media, so the Instagram, the Facebook. Um, I want to start doing flyers. So um, a part of uh, Womb that I was telling you about, um, she just did a session on um, off-site marketing strategies, which of course, you know, we are where we are right now with social media. So I'm thinking yeah. everything that I'm doing, Instagram, Facebook, Etsy, you know, Facebook groups, things like that. But she had a good point where she was like, well, it's more than just online. Like, how are you reaching those people that aren't online? 
So I'm going to start doing flyers. I'm going to start doing um, workshops, live events, um, trying to partner with like schools, elementary schools and um, daycares. Wow. So um, just, yeah, trying to really reach just everyone just so they can see it. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and get the opportunity to shop if they're interested. Yeah, I love that. My next question was going to be, how are you working to grow the business? But man, you're you're working to grow the business. <laughs> I'm working on it, but it's really just, you know, like I said, working full time and also, you know, wanting to do so much with the business. It's like, do you even have like the bandwidth to do that, I girl? Know. Like, yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> so how do you do it? Let's talk about that then. So, I mean, obviously, like you said, you have a lot in your plate. You work nine to five and then you you have this business that you're working. You're intentionally working to grow it. How do you balance it? Like, what's your, which, um, do you have routines that help you to stay on top of things? Like, those are the things that I think when people start a business, they realize then how, important and how intentional you have to be about your time you know right exactly so the um the main thing um is a ceo day so i did a um training with my website developer um it's the tc tct design firm so she has a marketing firm um and she had a course look i'm always signing up for like the free stuff right yeah no that's <laughs> so smart know, that's, that's a gym that's, that's a gym yeah, right there. i was like girl what you doing that's free so, <laughs> so um she created something called a ceo day so it's choosing a whole day where you're going to focus on your business wow. so mind you eight months into my business i wanted to throw it away i wanted to give oh, up did you i did because of course you have to have, you know, time. And I just felt like I was overwhelmed. I was like, nobody's shopping, you know, I'm like tired. Did you feel like you were putting more into it than you were getting out of it? No. So that's the thing. I wasn't putting anything into it. Oh, okay. So, you know, she kind of like pointed it out. Like, she was like, well, what have you done? And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm just, it's there. And she's like, right. But what have you done? Okay, so you thought you could just make it, set up the platforms, you know, set up the website, and then it would just run. And then just let it do its thing. Like, God got me. Go ahead, girl. (laughs) So she was like, okay, so what have you done, you know, this week? What have you done last week? And I'm like, I mean, you know, I shared it on my, you know, on my personal page. She was like, Kayla, are you serious? Like, that's not, and she was very, like, raw and real with me, which is, like, what you need, you know? Like, she was like... Yo, we have a guest. It's not KJ. <laughs> I know everybody's like, is that KJ? There's a new business in town. Golden Touch Mobile Detailing. If you're in the Richmond, Virginia area and tired of riding dirty. Or you appreciate a deep clean. Book an appointment with Golden Touch Mobile Detailing. It's not your average car wash. Full interior and exterior cleaning. And Golden Touch Mobile Detailing comes to you. It's the attention to detail to make you a returning customer. Follow the Instagram at Golden Touch RVA and book your appointment. I guarantee you'll be riding clean. Um, but I joined a marketing group um, with my website designer, who is TCT Design Firm. And she did a one week of marketing things that you can do to grow your business. So the things that she had listed, I was like, wow, you can do that? And, you know, just because I was new. So I'm like, okay, well, that's cool. That's cool. Like going live, for example, or like, um, communicating with your followers, things like that. I'm like, never thought about that. So she was like, you know, you should try it, kind of see what happens. And from there I started, you know, getting sales. I started getting people that were engaging with me like, Oh, I love this. I love this. Things like that. And I was like, Oh my gosh, this is what it took to, this is what it's called to put in, you know, and then get something out. I wasn't putting anything in. Yeah. Where, where I, nothing was coming out because I wasn't putting anything in. So, yeah. um, you know, doing that, joining that marketing group and then having my CEO day where throughout the week, I write down, don't forget to do this. Don't forget to do that. Oh, make sure you count inventory for the pop-up shop. You know, make sure that you count your books to make sure your money's looking okay. Things like that. And then on the CEO day, which are Sundays. So every Sunday I take my list no TV, no phone, you know, not going anywhere. And so my CEO day to do list is done. 
Girl, I'm about to take your idea. <laughs> Come on, I'm telling you, best thing that ever happened. Oh, day. I owe Tracy, Tracy, so she's the owner of TCC Design Farm. I owe Tracy my life. I'm telling you, I was like, so focused now, you know? And it's just hard because I'm on my phone. I got my boyfriend, you know, that's here. So I'm like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Sundays are supposed to be the chill, but I'm like, leave me alone. I got to work. Me. Yeah. I got to work. I bought myself a little desk, a little, you know, Right. So it took, so you set the scene and it took someone, it took allowing someone to take a look in your business and what you were doing. So like, what's your stance on like coaches and, you know, courses and guidance and when it comes to entrepreneur journey? I think that they are useful if you're going to apply the methods. Mm. So again, that was my whole thing where it was like, yeah, I'm taking this stuff in, but I'm kind of reading it and I'm like, okay but I didn't have time, you know? So once I was like, girl, you have time, you're going to make time for what you want to make time for. Right. So, you know, if you are going to, especially if you spend a lot of money, I was blessed to be in things that were free because just God was like, here you go, have this real quick. (laughs) But just imagine if I spent, you know, a thousand dollars, $2,000 on something. And then I said, I didn't have time. It's kind of like, right. Well, I love that you, Yeah, I love that you, and you made a good point, you know, when you spend that money on those things, then you don't actually implement it. So like the fact that you were able to find free opportunities to help you in your journey and you actually implement it, it shows that you have a desire to make this business work, you know? Yes, a hundred percent. But, um, you know, when it comes to doing things, I think that as entrepreneurs, we forget that no one's forcing us to do it. Hmm. so when we're in school you know it's like do this or you fail and you're like okay well I don't want to fail let me do it right but when when you're doing it on your own it's kind of like I'll get to it I'll get to it no one's on your back no one's yeah. reminding you you know no one's like don't do this or you'll fa-. you know if you don't do this you'll fail so that's why it's so hard as entrepreneurs to kick your own butt like you yeah. know it's, it's hard. It's very, very hard. You can provide the most coaching, but if you are not mentally ready to read it and take it in, you're wasting your money and you're wasting your time. So how do you think your mindset then plays into actually making, starting a business? It's, it's huge. I would want to say it is 90% is mindset. And it's mindset when it comes to really anything that mm-hmm. you, you are growing within um fitness you know uh anxiety if you have you know certain things it's all about how you think yeah so in the beginning I was getting all this free information and I'm like yeah 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 but my mindset wasn't there we didn't have like a mindset training you know on like you have to your mindset was I have a lot to do and (laughs) yeah I don't you know I I want to do this but I don't have the time but as soon as you change your mindset to oh no I'm gonna make time it seems like the floodgates started opening and you started actually like seeing fruit from all the seeds that you were planting exactly so the mindset was huge you know once you tell yourself you know and this is just how I motivate myself once you tell yourself it's not an option that's when it's like okay I gotta do it just like with school you know if you don't do this test you will fail I can't fail you know so let me do it so with my business if you do not engage with your customers if you do not post you know your information on your social networks if you do not do pop-up shops you will fail and then my mindset's like I don't want to fail after all this that I put into this business. So let me get it together. So how do you, or or do you, do you do goal setting? Do you set goals with, within your business? I do. So I do um, goals every month and then every quarter. So we are Beautiful. entering quarter four tomorrow. Yeah, girl. Yes, tomorrow. Yep. Tomorrow. Yep, so, October, November, December. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so Q4 goals are already set. And October goals are already set. So yes, goals so, are so, so important. You carve out, is that something you do on CEO day? You like re like uh, reevaluate and, and see what you want to move forward in? Exactly. Yep. So CEO day, that's always one of them for the month. You know, as we get closer to the end of the month, I always figure it out for that next month. But then, you know, the one CEO day, I take more time to think about um, four or five goals for that quarter. Yeah. So, will you, are you will you share what type of goals you make? 
Yes. Yeah, so um, I'm trying to make sure that I remember. So one is, um, and you'll be the first one that I'm telling. So everyone hopefully is, I'm excited. So I want to start doing subscription boxes. Nice. Okay. So with those um, for Q4, I want to start them and um, put them out. Um, I want to do the newborn subscription box, which is of course um, for new moms. So you'll have your, um, you know, your wipes and your nail clippings for the for the babies, and you know, some. This sounds balls. like great gifts right. for the holiday. Yeah, so yeah. just a baby shower gift. You know, you can go ahead. Um, and then I want to do like a holiday box, so either Halloween, Thanksgiving, or Christmas. Nice. Yes. So I want that to be available. So that's one goal. Another goal is to make $2,000. So last quarter I made a thousand, mm-hmm. which was like, whoop, whoop, whoop. Uh, 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 <laughs> hold on, hold on, let him cheer for you. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> but now with this quarter, you know, this is the holiday quarter. Right. So everyone's shopping and getting ready for Black Friday and, you know, Christmas and things like that. So I, I doubled it, which I was like, you sure? You sure, girl? And I was like, yeah, girl, we got this. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> Hey, you got to so, reach. You got to reach. Yeah. Well, I love I, and I love your goals. Now, what do you do daily as like, well, not daily because they have CEO day, but what's going to be the steps to actually meet those goals? Like, are you going to work on marketing? Are you going to work on networking? Or, you know, what, what is going to be the things, the little actions, I guess you could say to actually reach the goal? Yes, yes, yes. So um, marketing is huge. Um, definitely posting, engaging, um, reels are starting to be like really big. Yeah. So reels and TikTok. So I am not talented there. <laughs> but what I you talking me. about? All of us are little videographers on, on reels and TikTok. Right? <laughs> look, yeah. I need your help, Aaron, because look, Aaron looks like he get it together with the TikTok. Oh, Aaron just went, um, I guess you could say viral on his Somewhere. one of his Instagram reels. Somewhere. It was a sport, yeah. his sports page. Yeah, he got like, what is it? uh 354k yeah i was like okay yeah. can you please do that on the podcast page okay, i mean so, y'all, please Aaron is my new um, um <laughs> coach okay <laughs> that, yeah coaching will be coming soon yeah. yeah yes and i will be booking quickly <laughs> yeah we are thinking about doing some like podcasts um like how to start a podcast you know get some guidance and whatnot but anyway back to the, your journey um <laughs> But yeah, no, we can talk about social media though. Like there's so much, I always say it, you know, there's so much power in social media. And um, I think just like supporting each other, sharing each other's work. uh, It, I mean, it costs nothing. It takes nothing. You know what I mean? So we, you know, that's, I think it's a great way to support small businesses, to support business of color is helping get reach out there, helping people reach them. Exactly. Yes. It's it's huge. And, and I, and wondering why people don't do it as much because you always see, I mean, at least for me, on my personal page, I have roughly 3,000 followers. Oh, you got a good and following. And I always see like the same picture of like Beyonce going around or like the same video of like the baby's new video. But I'm like, y'all don't ever share any of your friends like stuff. So I'm like, right. that's a little <laughs> weird, you know? So, but I'm like, you know, I know that for me, I don't share someone's stuff if it doesn't resonate with me. So for yes, example, that's true. I do, yeah, I do know someone that does like Bye Bye Belly, for example, and they're like, share my post. And I'm just like, I I personally don't want to because I don't use it. Right. right. You know? Yeah. So um, I get that part. But then I'm like, you know, if you're just saying, hey, shout out to my friend, they do have this. I think that that will get people, get small businesses so much further yeah. than than they yeah, are. I'm always looking for an opportunity to support someone and share their shit. Like, you know, right. whatever I can do to help move you along your journey, I'm gonna do it, you know? Right. right. Exactly. If I if I buy or purchase something from a small business, I'm I want to shout that out. So I'm gonna take my little Instagram post and actually put their tag on it. Yeah. You know, we that's are. something simple. Like if you're gonna be rocking the shirt, go ahead and tag them. We just exactly. um I just I want to say signed up for it, but she didn't even ask nobody to do it with her, but I said, I'm going to, uh, Kina of Helen river candle, uh, collection. 
is she's made it like, you know, a goal to buy from all small business owners for so the like holidays. Well, oh, she, yeah. she didn't make it a challenge, but I'm challenged. When I read that, I said, oh, like, I, I need to do this. So I, um, I told her I'm going to, I'm going to do that too. So I, ch- I want to challenge our listeners. Uh, the ground up podcast. Challenge. Yeah. If you can. Ooh, I love yeah. a challenge. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. If you can, for the holiday season, if you can buy all your gifts from small business owners, do it, do it, post it, tag us, tag Helen River. Um, yeah, I'm gonna put it in the show notes. I'm going to put, put in the show notes that I want us all to try to make sure we put our money in the hands of small business owners and it's even yeah, icing yeah. on the cake and a little cherry cherry topping if you do it of a person of color yeah we're gonna so. it's gonna be on the instagram too so yeah i was about to say if y'all really make that a thing i will double you know yeah. what y'all are doing and then we can even you know some proceeds go to like one small business or something like that i mean we can really do that because that is awesome yeah let's do it um, what has been the most challenging thing about starting a business or running your business? And then what's been a highlight? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, the most challenging is the feeling of doing it yourself. So um, it's a lot of pressure on your back. And, you know, it's just always that fear of like, I'm not doing enough, or yeah. I need to do more, or no one's supporting me. It's just always those thoughts. I mean, those thoughts will consume you, you know, because you're like, oh my gosh, I want to do more. I'm staying up to three o'clock in the morning, trying to figure out, you know, how I can be like, you know, the next, like Keisha Kayora with her tea, you know, <laughs> I'm like, how do I do it? Um, but the highlight I would say is seeing the kids' faces when they have their clothes so for example one person um bought a dinosaur tracksuit that i have which is like one of my favorite fall sets and she every time that she posts a picture of her son he's wearing the tracksuit and i'm like you know what that's cute but it's like what's up with that she was like kayla i swear to you he does not want to take this outfit off i was like oh that was dope So just hearing things like that and you know when I do pop-up shops and um you know a kid will walk by and say oh I need this you know I want this and then like mommy I need it I need it and they're like okay well I guess we're gonna have to get it things like that it's like you know I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do and then when they put it on because most of them want to put it on right then regardless of what they're wearing underneath they're like I need this jacket I need this hoodie mm-hmm. I need these pants on ASAP then once you see them and they're like, look at me, look at me. It's just so, I mean, it just warms my heart. Cause I'm like, oh, you really love it. Like, and right. I love seeing them happy. Are you, so what's your process of deciding what are you going to, what clothes you're going to carry? Um, so I send it to my, what is it? Like a focus group. Okay. <laughs> so nice. I send it to my That's mom, smart. my sister. Right. My mom, my sister, my two sisters, my dad, my boyfriend. And then I have a group chat for my brand ambassadors who are like the people that do the most shopping. So I'll send it in there and I'll say, you know, what do you guys think about this? You know, be as honest as possible. And one thing about my mom and my sisters, (laughs) they're going to be honest. They're like, no, why would you even take a picture and send that to me? No, please do not (laughs) add that to the boutique. I'm like, fair enough. (laughs) But yeah. once I get enough of like, oh, that's so cute. Oh my gosh, I need, I need. Then it's like, okay, that's something that, you know, these people like. So therefore I'm hoping that the public likes as well. Yeah, I love that. I love that you, it sounds like you have a lot of good support. Yes, I like great, great, great support system. I like how you build a team of your family to help help you with this whole process. And I like that. That's awesome. Yeah, do you have any, is, do you, is there any other um, ways that they help in the business? Um, so I have a tent and my mom helped me. Mind you, my mom is very like Christy Bougie Boo, right? So one time she helped me set up my tent and I was like looking at her like, aren't you scared you're going to break a nail or something? She was like, bro, I got this. Get the other side. I was like, girl. <laughs> so, um, my older sister, um, since she, you know, believes that she can't support financially as much she shows up to all my pop-ups and sits nice. with me you know so she comes and she walks around and, oh that's cute that's cute and sits with me hangs out for a while so 
every single pop up I've had in a year, she's been there, even if it was for five minutes. Yeah. Um, so she's done that. I know um, my boyfriend helps me uh, set up and break down for most of my pop ups. So, okay. so you um, have hands. hands. You have people yes. who are there. To so many hands. Like they're all so willing. So um, I'm really blessed to have my group. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, what's your why? So I know you said like you'd love to retire at 40 or at least go full time in your entrepreneur and your business at 40. Um, wh- why are you doing this? Why do you want this? My why is I've been a role model for as long as I can remember. So there's a lot of people that, um, you know, look at me for advice or look at me for, um, you know, just being there for them. So I've, I've taken a lot of pride in that my whole life of being there for people, whatever you need, I'm there. Um, so now that I'm at the age that I am, you know, a lot of people look at me and I know that if I can show people that you can do, you could be an entrepreneur, um, you know, at the age of 25 at the time, um, you know, I know for a fact that I have to do it for them. I have to do it for the people that um, are scared or the people that believe they have to work at Wendy's because that's the only way that they can provide income for their children. Um, You know, it's not, that's not the only way, that's not the only opportunity um, I know I talked to one girl working at um, Chick-fil-A and she was like, um, I, I saw lashes, but whatever. Like, you know, and I'm like, whatever. Like, what do you mean? I was like, if you sell lashes, stand on them lashes. And she was like, well, nobody buys. I'm like, girl, put your lashes on Instagram. Give me your car so I can share them lashes and we're going to make this money. So just, you know, being able to talk to people like that and actually mean it. You know, it's one thing to just I kind of like, yeah, you got it, you got it. But to actually show that I'm doing well as well, you know, it'll be able to motivate other people and show other people like Kayla did it. You know, she's I could do it, too. I can definitely do it if Kayla could do it. (laughs) Yeah, right. I love it. That's beautiful. And it's true. It's so true. We are, you know all of our accomplishments and everything we work towards is not just for us. You know, in fact, if it is, you might want to reevaluate. Right. (laughs) Yeah. All of this is bigger than us. You know, I don't have the things I'm working towards. I don't really want to do, but I know I need to and have to do it because if I don't, I'm not living in my purpose. Exactly. And you have a little one. Like I don't have, you know, a full fledged little one yet, but once they get old enough, you know, they may say like, I want to be an entrepreneur. And then it's like, I, I am an entrepreneur. So be an entrepreneur. You can definitely do it if your mama could do it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Um, sometimes I give the guests the opportunity to name their episode and you want the episode to be named um, Don't Give Up. Right. So let me ask you this. For the listeners who are listening and they're in stages of their business or their entrepreneur journey where they just want to throw it away, like you said earlier. <laughs> Throw it all away. Um, why shouldn't they give up? And, you know, what, what, what would you want to say to them? Or what would you have liked to hear at your eight months, you know? Um, I would say anything worth having is not easy. Mm. Everything that is worth anything takes time. It takes consistency. It takes, you know, multiple trial and errors. But there's no way that you can start something and all of a sudden it just grows. I mean, I'm not going to say no way, because if you were born into it, maybe you could start something and, you know, it'll happen. But for for most of us, you know, we we have to put the work in. You have to put the work in. If one way doesn't work, try a different way. If that way doesn't work, maybe you can get some assistance from somebody else, but it's going to work as long as you are putting something into it. So you can't, you know, just do nothing and and things happen. You have to put the work in, you have to put that focus in. And then from there, you'll definitely start to see changes. Absolutely. So where would you like to see the business in the next few years? What's your vision? In the next few years, um, I want to do Titans and Tiara's daycare. I want to do Titans and Tierra's uh, transportation service. Nice. Um, so that would be 
down the line, of course, very down the line, <laughs> because right now I'm like, let me see what I can do with the um, Children's Boutique, but um, Titans and Tiaras is a name that I'm very, very happy about, so we definitely are going to stamp that thing. You keep building pizza. the brand, and you'll be able to do all that more. Exactly. Keep reaching. Yeah. Like I said, you got to reach. You got to reach. <laughs> Especially with Aaron as my TikTok guru. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right. Kayla, you ready for the game? I'm ready. All right, we're going to play Would You Rather This or That. Let's do it. Would you rather be known for your good fashion or your good sense of humor? Sense of humor. Sense of humor. Love a funny person. Uh, This or that, candles or incense? Ooh, incense. Ooh, I'm a candle girl. <laughs> Would you rather a, a throwback? <laughs> yeah, well, it does. Yeah. Would you rather forget your wallet or forget your phone? Ooh, forget my wallet because my card is on my phone. Ooh, hey. <laughs> Apple picking or pumpkin picking? Apple picking. Apple picking. I'm with you. Would you rather spend the day at a festival or amusement park? The amusement park because I'm a big kid. Oh, I love it. I love it. All right, Kayla, thank you so much for sharing your story. Let the listeners know how they can reach you. Yes, yes. So my direct website, if you are interested in shopping, is www.titansandtiaras.com. My Instagram is Titans and Tiaras. And my Facebook is Titans and Tiaras. Feel free to shoot us an email. Or um, if you have any questions or you would like to see anything in stock, you can shoot us an email at titansandtiaras at gmail.com. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Y'all are the bomb. <laughs> <laughs>